In the previous unit, we talked about some general guidelines of developing uh, Jack applications. And in this unit, we're going to see an example of a full, uh, full blown Jack application in action. We'll both see the, see the program run and then we'll delve into its uh, Jack uh, code. Now, the application that we have chosen to show you is uh, something that we call uh, Square Dance. And uh, in showing you this particular uh, program, we want to illustrate some notions of uh, object-oriented design in uh, Jack. Uh, we want to uh, illustrate one way of developing uh, interaction uh, with the user um, using various input and output uh, services uh, supplied by the host operating system. Now, um, I want to say a few words about uh, object-oriented design. This is clearly not part of this course. You know, this course is not about programming. Uh, so we assume that you know something about uh, uh, object-oriented design. And uh, if you don't, you can see some examples um, in our course and elsewhere and get some ideas on how to design your own applications. All right, so we'll start with a quick demo of uh, the Square Dance game. So welcome once again to the uh, VM emulator environment. I have already loaded the uh, Square program, so we can go ahead and execute it. As we do so, we see that lots of things are happening with the code, but uh, nothing shows on the screen. And uh, indeed, uh, let me uh, stop execution and explain what's going on. So basically, you have to recall that uh, each time you start executing a program, the operating system has to initialize, the program has to initialize, so we have to spend several thousand cycles before anything shows on the screen. So we can definitely keep on executing the program and at some point we'll see some output on the screen, but if you want to skip all this uh, preliminary stuff, uh, what we have to do is turn from uh, program flow to no animation and no animation uh, means, in the context of the emulator, no animation of the program's behavior, of the internal uh, behavior of the code. And now we will rewind the code, so to speak. Basically, we set the uh, program counter to zero, and we'll start executing the program again. And immediately, we see a black screen, I'm sorry, a black uh, square appearing at the top left of the screen. This is the default square, which is, um, I believe, uh, 30 pixels uh, wide and uh, 30 pixels uh, high. And uh, you have to believe me that I'm now taking my uh, uh, finger, uh, one of my fingers, and uh, pressing the right arrow key. So let's do that. And indeed, you see that uh, the square has moved uh, until it hit the wall. Now I'm going to press the uh, down arrow left arrow, up arrow, and you see that uh, the square responds to my um, uh, keyboard events. You know, I can play with uh, several arrows, one just after the other, and uh, uh, the square will move uh, accordingly. I can also click the X key, and each time I click X, the square uh, increases by uh, two pixels on the base and, uh, and the height. And I can now uh, move uh, this square around. It, uh, it looks like it moves uh, slower, but it's only because it, it's bigger. So uh, it's kind of a, an optical uh, bias. And I can make it uh, smaller. So if I click the uh, Z key, each time I click, it becomes uh, smaller. The um, visual effect is not uh, very delicate because I didn't use any graphics optimization. And at some point, uh, the square will become so small that uh, maybe it will even completely shrink and uh, disappear. But actually, I see that uh, there is still a small square uh, surviving here. Uh, apparently, that's how the program is written. And uh, so I can, uh, once again, increase it and uh, bring it uh, relatively uh, back to normal, and uh, so on and so forth. So this has been a demo of our little square program. Now, to recap uh, the demo that we just saw, when you launch the uh, uh, Square Dance uh, game, uh, the first thing that you see is uh, a black square located at the top left uh, corner of the screen. Uh, and the square 
is not going anywhere. It sits there until the user does something. In particular, if the user clicks the uh, arrow keys, the square begin, uh, begins to move around uh, the screen. And uh, so uh, uh, the user can control the movements uh, using these uh, four keys. The user can also you know, make the uh, square uh, larger and smaller. And finally, the user can uh, quit the game. So nothing new here. You know, everything that I discuss, uh, that I just discussed was shown in the uh, demo. But we have to keep these things in mind when we uh, delve into the code, because the code is designed to implement all of this uh, uh, action here. All right, so what is the uh, architecture of our uh, program? Well, we've decided to uh, structure it around three independent and standalone uh, Jack class files. First of all, we have a square class that provides the square abstraction. So using this uh, uh, class, you can create uh, a graphical square and manipulate it and move it around uh, on the screen. Uh, then we have a square game class that uh, controls the uh, user's actions and uh, uh, responds to the user's actions by moving the square around. Uh, and this is done within uh, an ongoing uh, loop. And finally, we have a main class, which is uh, rather simple, that uh, serves to initialize things, set the stage, and get the square game uh, rolling. So these are the three classes that we use. And um, by and large, you know, this, uh, this uh, design here follows what is sometimes known as uh, MVC, which is um, uh, a well-known uh, design pattern that uh, recommends that you develop graphical applications using you know, some class that uh, handles uh, the data of the objects that you want to manipulate, another class, or more than one class, to handle uh, the control of the game, and uh, other features to, to control the viewing of the objects. And indeed, this is roughly what we do. The square class is our, uh, uh, corresponds to what is known as model. The uh, square game is the game controller. And we use a set of standalone uh, methods and obviously the operating system to actually do the drawing and, uh, and, and, put, uh, and, and supply the viewing um, functionalities of this uh, game. All right, so uh, moving along, I would like to begin to explore each one of these uh, three classes uh, step by step. So let's start with Square. Here's the API of Square. Uh, first of all, we uh, feature a constructor that creates a new uh, square and uh, locates it in the given uh, coordinates. And the square will be uh, created in the uh, given uh, size. Uh, the size is the length of the square size in uh, the square's uh, edge in uh, pixels. And then we have uh, a dispose method that uh, gets rid of the current square. Uh, we provide a draw routine that uh, draws the square and it draws it in its current coordinates and uh, size. Arrays basically draws the square also, but using the background color. So effectively, it erases the square. Uh, we have an in increase size and decrease size routines that serve to do uh, what their names uh, imply. And then we have a move up, move down, move left and move uh, right routines that uh, each uh, once again does uh, uh, what they uh, advertise. So everything is uh, very uh, self-explanatory. Uh, so as you see, uh, this is the uh, square abstraction and other classes in the world are welcome to use it, including, of course, the classes of our application. So uh, let's open up the code. And uh, uh, going back to this uh, square class, here are the fields that characterize the current object. First of all, it has an x and y coordinates. And I wish to remind you that the uh, top left of the screen is uh, consider considered as a 0, 0. And then it has a size uh, in pixels. Uh, then comes the uh, constructor. And here's the code of the constructor. So we set x and y to the given uh, uh, values. We set size to the given value. And then we call draw. 
Once we call draw, you will see the square uh, located in the current uh, coordinates and uh, presumably whoever calls this constructor will uh, call it with uh, zero, zero coordinates to begin with and this means that you will see the square uh, uh, kind of anchored to the uh, top left corner of the screen. So uh, after drawing it, we return this, which is something uh, which is standard in every Jack uh, constructor, we always have to return the base address of the newly created object to the calling code, as we've seen before in, in other examples. Moving along, uh, the dispose method is a standard. There's nothing special about it. We've seen uh, such uh, methods before. And then we have the draw method, which actually takes this uh, logical square and finally you know, shows it to the user. How do we do it? Well, we set color to true, meaning that we select uh, black, and then we use the draw rectangle uh, operating system function to draw a rectangle that has uh, a length and a height which are the same, so effectively we are drawing uh, a square using the standard uh, draw rectangle uh, routine. Uh, what about uh, arrays? Arrays does exactly the same thing uh, using the background color, using uh, false, which uh, is interpreted as white. Uh, then we have an ink size method, and the ink size method simply uh, erases the, uh, uh, the current uh, image of the uh, square, increases the size of the square, and then redraws it. Okay, so effectively you will see uh, a square which is uh, slightly larger than uh, what we had before. And notice the condition, uh, this method uh, just want, wants to make sure that uh, the uh, increase operation does not cause the square to sort of overflow uh, and mess up uh, uh, the screen. Then we have a decrease uh, routine which is uh, symmetric and there's no need to uh, discuss it. So that's how we increase and decrease the size of the square. So moving along, how do we move the square up? Well, uh, think about it. The square is located somewhere on the screen and uh, what we have to do is move it up two pixels. So the simplest way to do it, which is not necessarily the most efficient one, is to draw the current square in its current uh, position using the background color, which will uh, effectively eliminate it from the user's eye. Then we can uh, change the Y coordinate of our square and switch back to the, uh, for, uh, to the foreground color, black, and redraw it in its new uh, location. And that's exactly what we do in the implementation of the move up method. And if you want, you can stop the tape and uh, take a look at this code. And uh, you know, once we do it, the rest of the uh, move methods, move down, move left, move right, are very similar, follow the same uh, tricks, and therefore there's no need to, uh, to discuss them. All right, okay, so uh, this has been the uh, square class in all its uh, glory, and uh, now we move on to talk about the square game class that actually controls the game. So uh, to begin with, every square game class needs to have a square. So uh, one property of, uh, of the square uh, game class is a square, which is an object of type square. And then the square also has a direction. And the direction is something which is controlled by the user. And because this direction is something that we use um, in many places in the code, we decided to use some constants to, uh, to code uh, the four, uh, uh, the five possible directions, starting with zero, which means uh, uh, that the square is stationary. And so these are the two properties of every uh, square game. Uh, then we have a constructor which uh, creates a new game. And uh, here's the code of the constructor. We start by 
constructing a new uh, square. We construct it in the uh, top left corner of the screen and uh, we decided by default the square will begin its life in the size of uh, 30 uh, pixels. Then we set the direction to zero, meaning that uh, at the beginning we want the square to sort of sit tight uh, in the corner and do nothing until the user decides to, to start uh, clicking something on the keyboard. And then as, as we uh, normally do, we return uh, this, uh, as we normally do in constructors. Uh, dispose is uh, standard, but before we dispose you know, our object, we make sure to also dispose the square that we created and uh, you know, we act as uh, responsible uh, citizens. And uh, let's see, move square. Uh, move square is a routine which is designed to move the square. And uh, you know, it's not obvious to me that uh, it belongs to this class. Uh, we could have put it also in the square class. So it's a matter of judgment. You know, this routine could be either here or there. So we decided to put it here. So how do we do it? Well, if the direction is one, we want to move the square uh, uh, up. If the direction is two, we want to move it down, and so on uh, and so forth. And after we move the square, we uh, do a sysweight five because uh, uh, we want to delay the animation uh, somewhat, and then we return. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the move square uh, routine. And uh, then we uh, come to the uh, most important routine of uh, the square game class, which is called run. And this is the routine that actually runs the show. Now let's see how it actually uh, does it. Well, uh, we've chosen to do it in the following way. First of all, we declare a variable called key, which contains the scan code of the key that the user has last uh, pressed, okay? And if the user releases this key, it will be zero. No, so that's, uh, that's the contract of, uh, of key. And uh, then we use a Boolean uh, exit uh, named uh, variable to, uh, to decide when we want to, uh, uh, to exit the game, and we uh, uh, initialize it to false, because you know, the game has just started. Then we enter a while loop, and we say that as long as not exit, later on you will see as long as the user didn't hit Q for a quit, uh, what do we want to do? Well, uh, think about it. We started the game, and the square is uh, lodged uh, at the top left corner of the screen, and presumably it will take some while you know, a few nanoseconds or seconds or hours before the user decides to do something. So uh, how do we know that the user has actually uh, uh, began to use the keyboard? Well, we have to sample the keyboard. We have to use key press to find out what the user is doing. So what you will do, what you will see next uh, in this, uh, from now until the end of this uh, unit is the typical way uh, that uh, we uh, deal with, uh, with keyboard effects or with keyboard uh, events. As long as key is zero, it means that the user has not touched uh, yet uh, the keyboard. Uh, what do we do? We sample the keyboard and we put the scan code which the user has entered, or zero, into key. And then we move square. Okay, we move square because these are the rules of the game. The rules of the game is that the square is always moving until it hits the wall. Okay, and uh, at the beginning, direction is zero, so uh, we move the square in direction zero, which means that the square is not really moving. But at some point, you see, after many such uh, key presses, because we are running within a, a loop here, as long as, we are within, as long as we are within this loop, we know that the user has not touched the keyboard. But once the user uh, uh, touches the keyboard, we will be yanked out of this uh, while loop because key will no longer be zero. So finally, we have uh, a direction or a direction which is not zero. So if the key 
happens to be uh, 81, which is a scan code of Q. We uh, set the exit to true. If uh, the key is uh, Z, we uh, uh, decrease the uh, square. If its uh, uh, key is uh, 88, we uh, increase the square. And then if the key uh, uh, contains one of the scan codes of the arrow keys, then we uh, set the direction property of the square to uh, the corresponding uh, agreed upon uh, constant. And then we go on to enter into another loop which controls the time that the user is actually holding his or her finger down. Okay, so think about it. We arrive to this code because the user has clicked the key, right? So the user holds uh, the finger down and, uh, and therefore key is not zero. Um, but uh, at some point, the user will, will lift his or her finger. So as long as the key is down, as long as the key is down, as long as the key is not zero, we want to continuously uh, monitor the keyboard or sort of sample the keyboard using key press. And at some point, the user will lift her finger and the key uh, will become zero. So at this point, we're getting out of the loop. And uh, as long as we are within the loop, we move the square because uh, once again, we want the square to continuously move uh, because these are the rules of the game uh, that we have chosen to implement. So at some point, we'll be uh, out of the while that uh, controls the, uh, the user's actions, and uh, we'll be back into the uh, outer while that, uh, that asks the question, are we still playing the game? You know, as long as exit uh, is, uh, is false, we want to continue uh, playing the game. At some point, the user will click uh, Q, uh, exit will become uh, true, and uh, at that point, we are going to get out of this uh, outer loop uh, as well. And then the run method uh, will return, and this will be the end of the game. So that's the square game uh, class. Uh, moving along, the last class that we have to explore is fairly simple. It's uh, the main class. Uh, the main class uh, basically initializes things and uh, sets the game uh, in motion. So uh, it does it as is customary in Jack using uh, a main uh, function. Uh, so we create a new uh, game object. We, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, we um, call the run method of this uh, game object and then the method that I just described starts uh, executing. Uh, once this uh, run method uh, terminates, we dispose the game object and return. And that's it. So uh, this has been a complete description of the uh, Square Dance uh, application, and I do hope that it served to uh, highlight some of the uh, uh, art and uh, science of developing uh, interactive apps in uh, Jack. So uh, to recap, uh, we showed you this example because we wanted you to appreciate and understand the uh, user interface style that, uh, that uh, Hack uh, Jack applications uh, feature. Uh, we wanted to show you that you have to use the uh, operating system extensively, just like you use the operating system extensively when you write programs in Java and Python and other high-level languages. And uh, we also wanted to illustrate some uh, basic uh, object-oriented design. And uh, we didn't show you our testing strategy, but we wish to emphasize that this is something that you have to worry about uh, as well. You have to be able to unit test everything that you do, just like we do in any other project in this uh, course. So uh, with that, um, this, uh, that's the end of this unit. And uh, in the next unit, uh, we will discuss how to handle some uh, uh, graphical uh, requirements which are more challenging than, uh, than moving squares around the screen. So I'll see you in the next unit.